process object. We're going to take a look at process object, which will follow scalability and child processes in another, another deck. Process object. <clears throat> Similar slide we saw already. So global object that uh, provides information and control about the currently running node process. These are the streams, standard in, standard out. Standard out is a writable stream to standard out, standard in, the writable stream to standard in, standard error, writable stream to standard error. There's a bunch of actions on the process. <clears throat> CWD returns the current working directory. If we want to kill another process, we can send a signal to kill a process. If we want to change a directory of the current running process, we can. Some attributes on them, again, we already, we already talked about this, but the important ones, the uptime, the memory usage, and the uh, process ID. And these are it, all instances of the event emitter. We have a exit event, I believe there's a before exit, uncaught exception, and the POSIX, POSIX signals. So signals we can send along the way. Um, <clears throat> If I took a look at this guy right here, uh, let's take a look at this one. All right, so we are, what are we doing? So we can use standard in, and I'm going to open in terminal window here. So what this is saying is process standard out, write line, hello world. It's good, it is the same as console log in Node.js. So we're going to route, we are going to write to the, the running process standard out. <clears throat> and then this line here, process.argv is going to take the arguments that were entered on the command line, iterate through those arguments, and basically just output them. So it's going to give us the value. Actually, array is not used here, so I don't know why it's. So we're going to iterate over the command line arguments that the process received, uh, the index, I guess the position of them, and the value. That's all this is going to do. Let's see if I do node zero, zero. I can't press tab on this one. You can see there that it did a output the standard out, which was hello world. And then it took in the arguments, which was the two arguments on the command line it received was node and the file name. So you can see there that was that would have been a um, well, you know what, let's put a breakpoint on it. Why not? Run this guy in the debugger again. Kick this off. <clears throat> it opens up in the debugging console. Oh, this may not have any, This. oh, it does, okay. So you can see there, if, you can't really see it because the uh, debugger thing's in there, but it has two, takes the two command line arguments, which is Node.js and then the uh, the file. So it has that huge file path that I'm working with. And it basically will iterate through them. So if we console log there, maybe I'll catch it better on the way out. <clears throat> First position was node, the node executable. The second position, or which is the zero-based positioning, zero and zero and one for one and two, was the so in the second position was the file name. So it's just a quick example of using process out and argv. So you can imagine you can create, you know, some applications that run just on the command line, similar to something like PowerShell. All right. So the another one was what do we want to do here. So in this one, we want to track the fact that the process is exiting. So we're setting up an event emitter for the event exit for the process event exit. What we're going to do is, what are we going to do here? We're going to, we are going to just run this script quickly. It's going to register the event emitter on exit. It's going to, it is going to kick off. It's just going to scan through this file, register this event listener, and then it's going to console log. But then the process is going to end. This should fire in theory. Uh, it should have a delayed, it tries to delay the execution, right? I think we we looked about this in um, in the uh, in the in the example. This will never display because the process is exiting, so it doesn't have time to finish. 
let's, let's actually clear that out and take a look. So no zero. Oh my God, I can't spell. All right. <clears throat> so you can see quickly, it just fired through that. Execution completed. Exit with status code of zero. But if you notice this callback never fired, again, if we run it inside of the, uh, the debugger, you should see that, okay, in the terminal window here, it's about to exit. Execution's completed. I'm now, it has, I'm inside of this listener here with a callback. So now it's about to exit with this code. However, if I put a breakpoint into this timeout, it'll never it'll never fire in this thread anyways. So the process dies before it can serve that up. <clears throat> so two things on the so that if you notice there was a zero, so the, um, the exit code was zero. Exited with a status code zero. Uh, these codes mean something. Gives us some indication of what happened to our process if it dies or exits. So normally, exit normally node exits with a zero, which we saw when no more async operations are pending. So there are other exit codes. Number one, code one is an un, uncaught fatal exception. So if we see a process code of one, that's an indication that something was uncaught. There was some exception that handled that was thrown and wasn't caught by the event handler. Number two, unused, it's just reserved by bash. Three is an internal JavaScript parse error. So something happened inside of Node's uh, bootstrapping process. And it goes on, but anything greater than a 128 is a signal exit. So if something happens on a signal exit, Node receives a fatal signal, such as uh, sig, sig kill, which is kill the signal, or a hang up, I believe. Sig up, sig up. Then it'll be the code will be 128 plus the value sign of the signal code. So what some indication of what happened. These are the events. So we already we already tied one uh, through exit. Exit is emitted when the process is about to exit before exit. This event is emitted when node empties the event loop, nothing else to schedule. So if we go back to this guy here. And uh, I don't know, let's say we're going to put, uh, try to listen to that one uh, before exit. Again, remember, this is a name string. So we've got to make sure that we actually have it named properly, meaning that if we spell it wrong, it may not fire um, before exit. Make sure in our example that it, we actually spelled it right with the camel cased. Um, <clears throat> E for exit. So you can see there execution completed before exiting. I spelled wrong. And then you can see it exited with the status code. So we're able to tie into those two events at different times. Maybe we need to do something before it exits, like gracefully close some type of client that is doing logging for us. <clears throat> So these are the other properties on, on the running process. So we have standard in, standard out, which you said the RUV, or RV, the argument, command line argument, which we showed in the other example there. Dot ENV is used for environmental variables, exit code, the version, the platform. So these are just a matter of, um, we wanted to get some more information on, on the process, you know, maybe you wanted to, uh, I got to change this to back ticks, of course, if I wanted to get information on that. Before exiting, I want information on my, on my I can't even type right here. Dollar sign, process.pid, right? Process. It didn't show me the, Bark at me? It didn't. So undefined. All right. Process dot process dot process. What dot? Ah, I don't know what's going on there. I guess the current uh, current running process process dot. Where are all my? Interesting. I don't know why that's giving me a problem there. The process should be giving me these these variables here. So anyhow, let's continue on with my example. I probably have a couple more in here. 
All right, so why was that not giving me that information? Process dot PID, no, ID, standard in. Should be on there. Anyhow, this has standard in resume, standard in set encoding to UTF-8. What I wanna do is, what do we wanna do here? Let's see here, process standard in write data. Okay, so we're gonna say resume. Standard in resume, standard eight encoding. So we're setting up, we are setting up uh, the process to receive information now on standard in. This is how you would write on the command line. Once data is being is coming in, we're gonna chunk it and output the data. And then we are gonna listen to standard in on end and write process.standardout.write. All right, so two, so one dash. All right, so we're kicking it off here and we're just gonna say, hello world. If you can see there, I press enter, data, hello world. So we are resuming, so process is resuming. Right here, we're setting it to UTF-8. It's listening really for my data coming in. And uh, you know, you can do a bunch of things with it, right? You can uppercase it or transform the data. And then as it's chunking in, it's gonna output it. And then it's gonna listen for when we end. It's going to output end. So we could have a bunch of stuff that's going to echo back to us, right? And then we do control C, control, control X, control C. It didn't actually capture that. I guess we should have had that on exit. Uh, and it, yeah, so we we terminated the, the signal maybe we should have listened to it. So on end, this thing didn't fire. So one of our named events may have been off there. We can take a look at that, but that one didn't fire. But however, this is how you would do the uh, the reading back to standard standard in. All right, maybe someone's gonna save me with uh, some code. Do we need to require process? No, it should be global. So there should be something up with that. I'm not sure entirely why it's, here's the properties here, process properties process object it should actually include process pit i'm not sure what what i missed on that guy you know maybe i have maybe it's my version of node.js i'll get back to you on that one but um probably throughout these uh these examples in, in child processes we will come across the id because we need to track it when we're sending messages across the wire we don't need to re we this is a global object <clears throat> so it's not required. <clears throat> so there's another one for signals. I'm going to terminate one in just a second. All right, so we have we already went over the exit codes. Zero means it's all good. These are the events of the process. So I was trying to listen to an event on standard in, but that didn't fire. But we didn't we didn't listen to the process exiting, right? So if we were in the same situation and we said, all right, process dot on exit, this will pick up the fact that the entire, the entire process is being exiting or terminated. Right. Even though we may be working with the standard in the stream, the stream itself, right? Uh, I want, I want, to quit. That's the data coming back, control X, control C. So the process on standard in must be different. We are using a read stream. Let's see if that makes sense. We're using a stream on the currently running process. So we're, we are, we are exiting the stream. So that's why it's not picking it up. So I guess the execution is on the stream itself. And can you actually, that's interesting though, but uh, can you actually capture the event on standard in? I'd have to look up the name events for the stream. For argument's sake, I'll just try to put one on standard in, right? Just to continue this. Is there an exit on standard in? I don't have uh, the docs in front of me that that stream may be ending or closing maybe, right? Box control C, no. What about close? Standard in is closing. It's kind of, if you don't have the named events in front of you, it's basically like poking in the dark, right? Uh, that one didn't pick it up either. So we have to find out, we have one for data. We need to find out what the end and the close one is for listening when the, the process, um, the standard in process is ended. Uh, 
Let's see if somebody finds that point, push that in the uh, in the channel. The methods here on the process that we might want to use, uh, we can abort the process, change the working directory, get the current directory, exit code, and the uptime. And here's the stream. Now this one was, uh, it, it should have picked it up, right? I have an example there, end. When the stream is closed, when the stream is closed, output on standard error. So for some reason, even though my example, it should have triggered that end, but it didn't when the stream is closed. Hmm. Not sure why, maybe maybe there's something in there. All right, so these are these events. So I have this example. You can put a watcher for signals on your process, which is pretty cool. So these, you can run a process and then from another process, you can actually interrupt it. Or you could use the command line control C and pick up the fact that it's being interrupted. You can put a watcher on the resize of the console. That one was tricky. Let's see if I recall. I okay. I know. I know the trick here on this one. You cannot run this from, and maybe that's the problem I'm having. Is you cannot. Some of these work better in the command line, the DOS the DOS command line, better than the the Visual Studio terminal window. Uh, specifically, this resizing. I remember demoing this before. And then uh, put a watcher on the process exiting and then display the process ID for the currently running process. So I have process.pid there. So lowercase, maybe that was the problem. Let's uh, let's take a look at that one here quickly and see if that, that would actually work for us. So I have all this and it's the same thing. Actually, I, the chunking didn't really, it's basically the same example. And then we have the interrupt. So we're gonna interrupt it, this guy. We're gonna try to resize them. Uh, we're gonna track the fact that it's exiting, but we have process.pid lowercase. And, uh, and let's actually, let's actually see first if it works in this window to dash. So the process ID did work there. So it was lowercase, not uppercase. So maybe that's a very, very, um, very picky, right? So the process ID is this. Okay. Now if I do a control X, <clears throat> control C exiting, it did capture exiting on this one, on the process. It did capture the term, the terminal command has been triggered. So if we actually put some breakpoints in there just to better see this. <clears throat> put a breakpoint on data received, put a breakpoint on, is it gonna end? We know that one didn't fire. On signal, terminating command. This one won't fire in the terminal window, I found, and then the exit. <clears throat> Debugging console, all right, so where are we here? Uh, I'm caught. Why is this not? So what is this guy doing here? So it's not liking the debugger at this moment here. Why is it not liking it? on the terminal window? Where is it taking my, I guess I'm in debugger. I cannot access the, uh, yeah, I guess I can't access the, uh, the debugger in the way I want to, but that's fine. All right. So we know that it runs and we know we get the interrupt. The interrupt, however, I was trying to tell you is that we need to actually use this command line here to track the window resizing. So let's try that. Let's try to find where where this one is here. I can't open this, so I need to go to, bear with me here, cd block com dash blockchain. Yeah, where are we? There. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> you guys get to watch me do this. Uh, where are we? CD full stack dash three. CD session eight. Sorry, I didn't have this planned ahead of time. Oh my God, where are we? Session session eight tab. At least I have the tab key. Will that save my life? No, it won't. All right, session eight tab. Oh my God, gosh. core concepts. Uh, yes, there we are. CD demo. I can use the tab there. Oh my God. Demo. 
just want to demonstrate to this to you. All right, where are we now? We are, we are, we are in node process object, and I want to. That's the guy I want to go. And look at all my, look on my. There we go. So node two dash proc tab terminate. So if we enter some data back, it should echo back. Hello, echo back. If I interrupted it well. So the other event, the other thing I was looking for was the resizing window. So if I resize this, it should take it up. There you can see the resizing has been triggered. So the process is tracking the fact that my window is resizing. You can see that every time I'm Every time I'm like resizing this guy, it's triggering. Sorry, you lost that there, but it's triggering all these outputs, these signals. And that's a signal to the process that I'm resizing the windows, if you can notice that there. And then finally, if I want to do the interrupt, which will trigger, it'll trigger the that other signal. Control C and Control C terminated. So terminate command triggered and then exiting. So it did pick up some of these signals nicely. And it's a global object. So that took me a little while to get to this long path for sure, but let's look at what happened here. So this, we are taking standard in data as we set up. This was the signal that's listening for, sig int. And sig which sounds like sandwich, sig which, sig signal which, win. It's, so let's, let's actually, uh, it probably doesn't work in uh, iOS, but this is, if I can read this out, signal, when window changing, right? Sig which huh. resizing process is exiting. It figures out that everything's exiting. And then uh, of course, if you want to get the, the process ID, it's the lowercase PID. All right, cool. And uh, that's what that is. So what was the signals again that we were looking at here? If we had the list of them somewhere in here. There was a look up there for signals, let's see. Quickly before we move on to something else, signals, process signals, code, node. I want to see the different ones here in the process documentation. I want to see the different signals, signal codes, signal code. Where are these guys? Should be a big list of these guys here somewhere. In the documentation, hopefully this has some signals for us. Sig which signal events? Signal events is what we're looking for here. There we go. Signal events will be emitted when Node.js receives a signal. Please refer to the signal seven for list, the listing of standard POSIX signal names, such as SIGUP and SIGINT. So this is the signals. This is from the Linux manual. So we're actually looking at the Linux manual here. Oh, it's telling us that I need to look for these. Let's see, SIG. SIG int oh there you go look at all these signals here all right this is this is uh this is linux this is where we're deriving all of these from right so sig int there's a whole list of them sig kill sig pipe when there's a broken pipe you know so on and so forth i'm not going to re read all through them right sig terminate when the signal is terminated the terminate the termination signal so when Another signal may terminate from the outside. It'll know to pick that up. The sig which we just we just fired was the window resizing signal. And there's a, there's just a bunch of other ones, right? So this is coming from the Linux world, in case you didn't know. And um, libuv and all these things are a wrapper around the POSIX signals, Linux uh, Linux type signals. So we are interacting with it from the JavaScript um, UI. So some background there. All right, so that is the end for process object. Let me just stop this guy. Remember, it's a global object, and we'll move on to scalability in a minute. <clears throat>